Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today I am going to be continuing on this little series on making this spatula, fork, and ladle set. And today we are going to be working on the ladle. Once again, you can find the templates for these at blacksmithpdfs.com and I greatly appreciate your support of the channel there. So, today we're going to be working on the ladle end, but first we're going to start like in the other video that I did when we forged the spatula, we are going to take and work on the cone portion itself. We're going to work on that first, and then we're going to take and form out the ladle. Make sure you stick around and watch the next video in the series, which will be the fork set. Thanks for watching. Well, let's go ahead and get started on this now. So, I've already taken the liberty of, just to save time on camera, rolling the actual barrel of these things here. Now, if you want to take and see how that's done, the sockets here of the actual ladle sets, uh, all you have to do, they're all the same, go and watch the video the very first video in the series, which was the spatula set. I went in great detail at the beginning of that video and throughout the video on how to actually form that socket. So today we're going to be covering how I actually form the ladle end of it and this will help give you a little bit of extra information and how to take and do this. So today I'm actually going to be using a swedge block I'm going to use a swedge block to actually form this piece, but if you don't have a swedge block, you can take and use a wooden stump with a dishing depression dished out in it, and that should help you uh, greatly. Now, I've already done a video on making a dishing stump, if you haven't seen it yet. I'll put the links to all the videos in this series, plus the dishing stump in the description down below. If you don't know where the description down below is, there should be like a little arrow button that you can press. It looks like a little triangle, triangular shaped thing that's a little upside down deal. And you can be able to push that and that'll drop down uh, the actual description of the entire video if you don't know where that's at. But that's where that's at and I'll leave the links there and I'll try to leave them linked up at the end of this video as well. So without further ado, let's get over to the sledge block and start hammering this to shape. Okay, so here's my dishing block. This is a sledge block. This is made by Green uh, Mingle or Megle. And I'm not sure if they still actually produce these or not or where you can get them at. If I can find the links to them, I'll put them in the description down below. Uh, I don't think they're widely made anymore, but you can get something done. There's a lot of other manufacturers of these type swedge blocks. I'll, I'll put it down in the description. I'll link some options up there for you. And those are some affiliate links. FYI. So, what, are, what is needed here is obviously you got to have your piece hot, but you also have got to have a really nice domed face hammer. If you do not have a not really nice dome faced hammer, you're going to run into some problems, okay? You're going to, the problems that you're going to end up running into without a domed face hammer is you're going to end up creating mar marks inside that bowl. And that's just simply something that you don't want to take and have, all right? If you have mar marks, those mar marks are going to show up in your final product and, you know, it won't look too good. It's very hard to grind out the inside of a bowl. So, now I got this good and hot, I'm going to do it where the smooth transition, not the place, not the underside where we wrapped it around, let me get this on camera, not this side, but this side is facing down in the swedge block. So that way, that side's facing up, and the downside is down. This will produce a really nice, clean ladle. And you might notice something else occurring here. And I might zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about here in just a second while I take advantage of the rest of this heat. But you might see something else occurring here. Let me zoom you out just a bit. If you've noticed, I'm already starting to get that offset in there. Like we put on the spatula, 
So this does two things. If you hold it in one spot, not only does it form this, but it also gives you that offset that we're needing. So this way you can get down inside dishes and whatnot. So now this is the first stage of forming. And it's done in the much larger block depression. Now, if you have, if you're doing this in a wooden block, you're going to work it in the wooden block and you're just going to keep hammering on it and it will eventually raise up to where it's deeper and deeper. But right there is a shallow ladle. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the next size hole, which is right there, uh, after I get this heated back up and I'll be right back with you. I've got it good and hot again, coming into the next size down block. And we're going to take and focus on hammering straight down into the block until we get a really nice bowl formed. Now, one thing you're going to end up noticing about this is there's been scale popped off the back side. And because that scale has been popped off the back side, you're going to have to clean out the block. If you don't clean that out, you're going to just beat that scale into the surface finish on the back side of the bowl, and therefore you're going to have to do some more grinding. So now I just finish this out and just smooth it all up and planish it out. You want the edge to have a really nice rounded look, no square sharp corners or anything like that. And you want the dome to have a really nice looking dome to it. So as long as that's really nice and dome, there you go. So I forget who had commented the other day, and I don't know if they were being serious or just joking around or whatnot, but they were talking about, the hand, I was talking about the handiness of a swedge block, and they pretty much said that in the comment section that it's about as handy as a boat anchor. And uh, this right here would prove that theory wrong if they weren't joking. Uh, you know, you can make a lot of money out of a swedge block like this. It's an invaluable tool in the workshop if you know how to use it. So, there we go. So we've got that all done. Now, through forming like this, you're going to see this is a little off canter. It's just a little bit crooked like this. And the seam's not quite running straight. I'm going to go ahead and heat this up. I'm going to grip the dish portion in the vise and just tweak it over a little bit and then that'll be done. Alright, let's get this in here. Now the trick here is you don't want to squash down your bowl. You just want to tighten it up just enough that it'll hold it steel while you do your little bits of tweaking to get this thing straightened out to where you want it. You don't want to create a flat spot. Once again, you just want to take and tweak it. And that totally just happened on camera. You're welcome. So, let's move on to this little over here where you get this brushed up a little bit. You can do this at the anvil, obviously. And there's going to be a lot of cleaning work to do on this. I'm going to cover cleaning up in a whole nother video based around this subject of how to get the utensils cleaned and seasoned. So be on the lookouts for that video. I'm going to complete the video series with doing the roasting fork and then I will make a video at a later date of how to get these perfectly clean. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments section down below. And like I always say, God bless you and we will catch you on the next one.